You finally got the type of armor you like. Celine smiled at Sam. Laughing, Sam rubbed the back of his head. I know. It's kind of crazy to think that I've already reached one of my goals. Celine looked at James. I think your armor selection really fits you. Though, I assume that the guild had provided lighter gear? She asked. James was startled that Celine had realized that he had chosen heavier armor. How did you know? His mouth was open in surprise. Raising a hand to her mouth, Celine giggled at the question. She then placed a hand on her own armor. The guild had done a good job at selecting armor that went with my style of fighting. But I noticed that some were lighter than others. After seeing what Raul had selected, I had an idea that the guild had probably done something similar to everyone else. Listening to Celine walk through how she was able to figure it out, James nodded along. Not only are you a higher level than me, but you're a lot smarter. I doubt I could come to the same conclusion just by seeing what other people were wearing. My sister is pretty smart. Raul grinned at how James was reacting to Celine's analytical skills. He placed a hand on Celine's shoulder. It was clear that he thought highly of her. Celine blushed at her brother's compliment. I'm sure all of you are just as smart, James said. Even if leveling up is based on how much energy we take into our body in order to gather enough guild points to be able to afford the equipment you had and the types of food you got to eat, I would think that each of you is able to grasp things faster. He was amazed and appreciated being able to interact with adventurers that performed at their level. James knew that there was a lot he could learn from their group, so he wanted to interact with them more. There was always the possibility that he'd be able to pick up a valuable piece of information that could significantly improve his chances of surviving outside the city. It's interesting to think that there could be adventurers out in this world that could easily survive outside the underground city. If I were to meet them, then I'll be that much closer to being able to explore the outside world. James thought to himself. It looks like there are more people that are finished. Raul spoke up, breaking James's train of thought. Seeing where Raul was looking, James turned around to see who it was. James' mind went blank when he saw who it was. As the person came closer to them, they finally asked, What do you think? Does my armor look nice on me? They took a moment to twirl around to show off their armor. Hearing their voice, James blinked several times and then stammered, You look beautiful. Maya blushed at James' compliment. James looked at Maya's armor that had exposed her legs, midriff, and a lot of her chest. Seeing how James reacted to her armor selection, Maya couldn't help but smile. I know it's a bit revealing, but I found it really helps to keep me free for when I need to fire off arrows in quick succession. It was indeed revealing, but James could see what she was talking about. With her current armor, she had a protective helmet similar to his. The big difference was how the helmet allowed Maya's long blonde hair to cascade down her back. And even though the armor was revealing, there was plenty of areas that had thick leather. The lower parts of her legs were protected by shin guards, and on her forearm, there was leather to protect against the string slapping her arms. He imagined that she wore the leather protection on both arms because it would allow her to fire arrows regardless of which arm she used. He did see Maya doing such actions in past requests, but she was more proficient with one hand than the other. James walked over to where Maya was standing and gave her a hug, lifting her up off of the ground as he spun around. Maya laughed happily while she was being twirled in the air.